Hi everyone, Deb here with Dahlia Designs. I thought I'd do a bead along with me today. Um, my initial thinking was I wanted to use items out of this beautiful swag bag that I got. And in particular, I was kind of intrigued by these bamboo corn on the cob looking <laughs> beads. I don't know how else to explain them. They're table cut. These are sort of like a light olive green, but they have like the yellow like the corn showing through and I thought they would be good for fall so I decided to make a fall piece and originally I thought okay I'll bring out beads well the other beads from there that I thought would work were these um what do you call these things you know the tube beads bugle beads sorry brain cramping here today so um I decided not to use those because I went looking through my old bargain bead boxes and I have one that has a lot of autumn jasper in but when I looked at it right next to these beads I didn't like it however I thought ooh red creek jasper would be good so what you're seeing here is red creek jasper because I have a ton of it this is not all I have and these were both from a bead show um, I think these ovals, these uh, 10 millimeter rounds, and the strand of um, rondelles here were all together from one bead show. And then I have bought 13 strands at $3 a strand of 6 millimeter rounds. I've used quite a few of them, but there was one strand that was open in the bottom of the bag, and so I used that here, and I have four left if we need them for spacing anywhere. So then I thought, I don't know, I wanted to do a double strand. I don't do them very often and I like having the red, just the Red Creek Jasper here and then the one with the, the corn cobs, I'll call them, bamboo beads <laughs> here. How am I going to connect them? And also this bead board, mm, no, this one might be my good one. One of my bead boards, it didn't measure right, but I don't think it's this one. I think this is the good one. We'll see. We'll figure it out. So, um, oops, I don't have my mic on. Oopsie. I hope you were hearing me. It's on, but I don't know. So then I thought, okay, if I string them, how am I going to connect them up here? Because I wanted a little longer than 14 inches, you know. Uh, if this is accurate. Um, so I found these little gold color or antique brass color bead cones and those were from my stash from um, Oriental Trading. I don't know what I just did with them. I had them right here. Here they are. Nope. Yep. Here they are. Um, see, I have a whole bag of them. I don't think they sell the jewelry making stuff anymore. But they're all smaller ones and initially when I went looking in my stash I had some huge ones from jewel school or something from years ago too and then I found I had a toggle clasp that is bamboo looking so I thought that was ideal for this although it's a little bigger than I like so then these were the wires I got in the swag bag and initially I was thinking I'd use this fine autumn brown but honestly, I think that's too fine for, oops, for what I have here. So, and I didn't want to open the garnet because A, it's too red and B, I have one open. So I went looking and I found antique brass, but this is heavy and I don't feel like I need heavy. So I do have a pack open that had four, and I had been using the garnet out of that for some other my pieces with the mukite if you missed that I'll try and put a link but I have a medium weight antique brass so we're going to use that and I brought in some Swarovski crystals because I felt like I needed a something on the ends of these um, corn husk beads and also I wanted to add a little sparkle and they're called um, luminous luminous green X, uh, luminous green zillion bicone four millimeter obviously they don't sell them anymore because Swarovski's not doing that anymore but like I've said previously I have a lot so I'm going to use them um, I brought in some artistic wire in the gunmetal bronze it's bronze to me not gunmetal um, I thought I'd wire wrap just simple little 
links back here, probably simple loops um, there. So I think, and also to make like a, um, a connection in here, I'll do a loop, wire wrap it, stick it up through there and hook the two strands on. So what we're first going to do, and uh, did I get everything? I think so. Then I have some jump rings and stuff like that. We're going to bring in our little these things. And I'm going to cut about, if this is 14 inches, I'm going to cut about a foot and a half, 18 inches times two. Because I need extra to hold on to to do the crimping. Oh, I do have crimps here. They're not soft like, so I'm using stuff from all over my stash and freebies and bargain bead box, which is, oh, I forgot to mention those, these little leaf beads. They're from the October 2022 bargain bead box and they're in antique brass. So my ruler over here is 15 inches. So I'm going to cut two of those right away. That way I don't have to mess with it again. <laughs> I hope you're all having a good day. Today is, what, Thursday, I believe. It's been a busy week. It's been a busy month, actually. Um, not a bad month this month, but just busy. And um, it's going to keep being busy. <laughs> so anyway, I just felt like I needed to create something. Yesterday I was kind of I was going to create in the afternoon when I got home from running some errands and, you know, I just couldn't. I just didn't have it in me. So I think I'm going to start with this outer side here and just string. So I may cut some of this out so you don't have to watch it all, but we'll, we'll string it and see how it goes. So easy stringing. Crystal. And if I miss anything, that's, I really have been bad lately about checking to make sure my pattern is consistent. Um, I've gotten to the point where if I have a sort of a focal in the middle, or like this one is in the middle, so I know I have three going on either side of it, but I need to check and make sure I have... Um, crystals on either end of those and leaf beads where they're supposed to be and that kind of thing. <laughs> so help me do that. No, I know you can't, but, and I'll see, maybe I won't like this once it's on the um, beading thread. That happens with me sometimes. I just totally change my mind. And um, yeah. I do love Red Creek Jasper. I have even more of it. Some larger beads and different shaped beads. Um, it's one of my favorite Jaspers. Autumn Jasper is very pretty too, but it, it does have a little more. Now, let me see which way I'm doing this. Uh, okay, so on this side, I want the leaves coming in towards the center. And you know, I might have had another one up here and took it off because of the length, I'm not sure. So I really only have four of these on. I'm not sure why I did that, but I have a bunch of them in with the rounds because I wanted to use those rounds, but I didn't want to open another strand. <laughs> Just me. I made my daughter, oh, now see. Yeah, I'm funny about this, the color I had, I didn't want to have two reddish ones right next to each other. Yeah, that's how I am. I hope I'm in screen. So I wanted it to be like red, sort of the yellowy tan, red, uh, and leaf bee, which is going the wrong way. Let me see how I like that. And in this, this strand, I'm having the crystals on either side of the bamboo beads. So anyway, I started out trying to use things out of the swag bag, and I'm only using, as it turns out, the, um, oops, you can't see the hole in that, because it's so sparkly. There we go. Um, I'm only using the bamboo beads out of the box, but I'm sure I will use more in the future. 
I'm using stuff from my stash and that makes me happy too because I really need to, to use stuff. I have all these gemstone beads and I'm really trying not to, well, I really can't afford to buy too many more beady things and um, until I sell some of my jewelry. So please come watch my, I don't think I cut this right. 15 inches is not enough. I'm going to have like an inch on either end, maybe, if I'm lucky. We might have to cut another piece. What was I thinking? I meant 18, didn't I? I did. Well, you know what? I will not throw that out. We will use it for bracelets or something. I usually, for bracelets, I cut 12 inches. And for necklaces, I cut 2 feet. But because this is a, not a full necklace, I was thinking a foot and a half, but I cut 15 inches. You didn't catch me. <laughs> Uh, but I'll save this one that I, the other one I cut for a bracelet. We'll see. Maybe I can do this. I don't know. And if I can, then I'll, I'll use the other piece too. Because I'm just going to crimp them onto a wire loop that's going to go in that, hopefully it's going to go in that, um, what do you call that thing? Bead cone. So that's one way you can hook them. You, you can hook them onto chain. You can hook them onto links. You can hook them to each other. Well, yeah, you can, sort of. Like you can connect them in and run them up through one of the strands. But sometimes that doesn't lay right. I don't prefer to do that. But you do them however you would like to do them. I just like to try different ways. So now on this side, the leaves are coming down towards the center also, is what I want, I think. And here we have tan, sort of a blue, blue, red, and a blue. I tried to be a little bit random, but not so random that it didn't look right, you know? Anyway. Especially on this one, on the rounds, I really was a little more random, but random is difficult for my detailed counting type brain. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't know. I think if I had life to do over and I was the same person, I think I would not, I maybe wouldn't have gone for an accounting degree. I have a degree in business with a major in accounting. I believe that's what it is. I have to go look at my wall. Maybe it's just an accounting degree. Well, what happened is out of high school, I started taking night classes at a college that now is right across the street from me. And um, my professor there thought I did so well. He was encouraging me to go into full-time college and get my degree. He was a really good professor too. I liked him a lot, but my life at that point um, was, yeah, I was immature and I, I ended up starting to get married and starting a family early, you know. Oh, I couldn't go away to college and leave my boyfriend, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway. Yeah, that was me back then. Okay, I think I can deal with this. I'm going to um, put this down a little bit. Oops. Anyway, I'm telling you too much information, but yeah, it's my life. So if you don't want to hear about me, you know, you don't have to listen. <laughs> Mute me or something. Um, I think this one's going to be too long. And if so, maybe we'll come back in and cut some of them down to three. I have stations of five and then on this one I have the crystal, the leaf, the crystal. So let's let's try it because it looks like the length is okay. 15 inches worked out. Phew! I really would have preferred to have about 18 inches I think. I just like to have a little more on the end to work with but I think we're going to be okay. My thinking was all right. Actually, before we go any further with this one, let's actually get my ruler here and try and measure this to see if this is accurate. That starts here. 
All right, it go. It's about twelve inches. So, and on here, this beadboard is pretty accurate. It's just a little over the six on each side, so it's roughly twelve-ish inches too. Okay, I have the good beadboard. Yay! <laughs> All right, let's just start putting these rounds on. And then I had the rounds mixed up with the, um, some of the rondelles flew into the rounds and I was like, no, it's not a round. <laughs> oh, the woes of being, a, and, and some of them tried to escape me. Some of the rondelles tried to escape onto the back of the desk, onto the floor. Actually, it was a round that decided to go on the floor. But when I went over to get my tools, I came back that one's not very good shape. Let's pick a different one. I think there's probably going to be a couple of them. And if I find, I think there was another one. Maybe that was the one and I didn't, didn't put it aside. And it ended up, it ended up here. And used again when it shouldn't have been. I really should have my my specky things on that I bought, right? It's funny too, because I just got a thing from my eye doctor saying, you really should get your eyes checked every year, not every two years. This is the second year. But you know what? I spent a lot of money two years ago on my eye exam and my glasses. I think insurance covered the exam and they would cover, you know, the cheap spectacles, but somehow they talked me into expensive frames oh those look the best on you you know and i was kind of in a mode you know we've been cooped up for so many years and i was like yes i want something i don't care how much it costs and now i kind of regret that because i think the cheaper glasses would be fine for me at my age i don't know anyway i digress i'm storytelling today and i'm losing my train of thought as i'm telling you stories <laughs> Let me know if you relate to any of this. But anyway, oh, I um, about the degree, I did go on later when my daughter was young. I went back to school nights and um, uh, it took me nearly 12 years going, you know, a class and then two classes. And at the end, I think I was taking three classes and working full time and raising a family and keeping house. It was, I don't know. I honestly don't know how I did everything I did when I was doing that, but I did. And um, my work life has been like super, super busy. Um, every job I've held, well, I worked at one company for nearly 26 years, off and on. I left twice and went back uh, twice. So, and then, yeah, then I changed. <laughs> and moved they well they sent me down to Tennessee to help start up a company for some contracts uh, no to work on proposals and then when we were working on the third proposal we won the first two and then they needed somebody with an accounting background to help start up the company and they offered me a very good position and I asked my husband at the time, and he said, absolutely sure, we can move to Tennessee. Biggest mistake I ever made in my life. Not anything against Tennessee. It was just a bad situation all around. And needless to say, I ended up moving back from Tennessee and getting divorced. And there's a whole story about that, but we'll keep that private for now other than that. So I am a single old person, which is exactly what I didn't want to be because my mother was a single old person. And I always swore I wasn't going to, oops, I wasn't going to be that, wasn't going to be that, but here I am, I'm that. But you know what? I can't complain. My work was hard, but I made really good money and it's allowing, it allowed me to retire a little early. It allowed me to be around to take care of her part, part a few years before she got really bad and I couldn't do it. 
um, and then moving her twice and being able to do this which I love and honestly this kept me going through some of those hard times including the pandemic so I got off on that whole spiel because I have an accounting brain, you know, but I always liked arts and craftsy stuff. And mom used to paint when she was younger and do crafty stuff. She was always helping me with crafty kind of assignments and stuff. She made me, I remember she used to sew too. And we had a, a thing in elementary school where we were learning about Japan, I believe. Yes, and she made me a, an outfit to wear for, we were having like a, a tea party or something at school. And I actually got my picture along with like three, two or three other children in the local newspaper, which it's black and white, but I still have it. <laughs> I came across it when I was going through pictures a couple months ago. So that was cool. But anyway, she used to be artsy and crafty. And my brother, I never got the drawing skills, though. And my brother did. Um, he used to, he mostly drew race cars and stuff like that. But he did really well at drawing. And um, he also does, or did, crafty stuff he doesn't anymore. But he used to have a little business making pool sticks people and he made beautiful inlays and stuff on his pool sticks really gorgeous he also likes gemstones and stuff and uh, yeah he had some really beautiful pieces I think he still has his setup at his home but I don't I think he just does it occasionally now for a friend or something and I don't think he plays anymore he used to be in pool tournaments too and travel he went to Las Vegas for um a national competition I think I don't know if they won or came in second anyway he was up there pretty good okay that's enough storytelling too much yippity yap huh so I should be talking about <clears throat> the beads excuse me a second all right this side is a little too long I think I'd be okay if I just make this last section three beads with a crystal let's try that and see how it looks because I think it's just a little bit too long where it is right now for it to lay because that one actually should be shorter than the other one <laughs> right for it to lay right let's do it over here too all right, I'll try and cut down story time a little bit. <laughs> Let's put these in here too. So I don't get them mixed up with my other ones I have laid out there. I like making necklaces. I don't know. I'm better at them than bracelets. Necklaces and earrings are kind of my thing, but I'm, I am trying to make more. You know, I don't know if I want that crystal on there. Is it going to get hidden? I think that's still a little too long. Let's take one more of the rounds off. Which would be a little odd. I could go back and change them to threes, but if I pull that up and yeah I think that'll work if I just take that down to two and you know what I'm not loving this particular bead either uh, oops let's get a little round, uh, green one because that side has green and I did leave the crystal on um Of course, I can't see to get it back on. There we go. Okay. Let's see. So if I hold them up together, 
I think that'll work. All right, that's what we're gonna do. So now I need to make a loop with wire, this artistic wire. This is 20 gauge. Um, it came in a little packet like this when I got it, which was a long, oh, looky. I don't think that loop's big enough, or I'd, I'd use it. I'll put that back in there later. Now, if you have nylon jaw pliers, which I do, but they're not right here, go ahead and use them, straighten out your wire, or you can just use your fingers several times. The heat helps straighten it out and the pressure, but it also work hardens it a little bit. So let me measure how many millimeters this opening is. I don't want my loop to be bigger than that. It is about one, two. I think that's um, 10, 10 millimeter bead. No, I guess it's half of that five, about a five or six millimeter opening. So I have to make sure my loop at the end here. I'm just going over my pliers. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll go down about halfway. That doesn't look like it would be bigger. Or I could get my bail making pliers, but I think if I go halfway, we'll have enough room to attach those on with seed beads. I'm not sure I'm gonna like this. Let me look at the size of this loop. That should be enough to hook two bead wires over. I think that's going to be good. All right. I'm going to wire wrap that. And we're just going to, oops, we're just going to try it. It definitely work hardened it. This is a pretty soft wire usually. And I'm just going to put two wraps. I think that's enough. I don't want a whole lot because, well, it's going to be hidden. I'll put three because it's going to be hidden in that cone if it works right. So we have three on the back, three on the front. Cut it off, dump it in there, and push it down. Okay, now we're gonna cut this off and I want it to have enough length, you know, so that, that that might be hanging out the bottom a little bit and then we need some room up here to make another loop or to put a bead on and make a loop. So I'm gonna leave a good, you know, let's see, how many inches is that? About three inches at the top up here. So if we put this in here, It's going to have the wires hooked onto it and they're going to go up in there. Maybe not that far. We'll see. Let's, let's go ahead and crimp one side anyway. I'm going to use Beetalon gold crimp tubes. Um, yeah, I guess I will. And I'll use number two just because I have a lot of them. Let me see. Yeah, I have two, two containers of number two gold crimp tubes from them. Um, I could, I have, I don't have many antique brass or brass crimp anything. I do have some crimp um, beads, but these are going to be pretty much hidden anyway. And they sort of go with that, right? I, I did four because we're going to need some for the other strand as well. So let's just try these two up here. I brought out wire guardians, but I don't think I'm going to use them. Softflex wire, I don't think really needs it. Um, and because we're putting it over that loop and it's going to be hidden, I think the wire guardians would maybe interfere with that. Let me take that off the cone temporarily. Put this through here 
and put it back down through here. And before I crimp it, I'm going to try the other one and just see how that's going to look. Maybe. Oh my goodness. It's getting stuck on that bead. The holes in the, there we go. I'm going to go down just through these first two. I don't want to go as far as where that crystal is. And that way it can fit through the other bead, but it won't show at the crystal site, right? And pull. Go down a little further. And where's my plier? Sometimes I need pliers to help pull the bead wire. There we go. Let's just see how that will work. Uh, you're going to see... Oh, you know, it might be all right. I might have to take off. See, that's going to work, except that... All right, we're going to crimp this one. I'm not going to push down on the crimp just yet because I want to see how this is going to work together. Sometimes with me, it is trial and error. All right, so bring this one over. We're going to make sure this is on the other side of it. Hopefully. And now see here I have a crystal. I might end up taking that crystal off. We will see. Because I think it might interfere with things going up into the, the tube. The bead cap. Plus, I don't think I can get this wire through the crystal twice. All right, let's, um, where'd my bead cap go? <coughs> Here. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, that one... Now that I put that on there, that doesn't want, uh, the loop is too long, first of all. There. If I yank it really tight, now I made my wire go a little wonky. I think it'll be all right. What do you think? You see a little bit of the crimp beads, but not too much. I'll try and make that really tight. I think it'll be all right. Actually, I'm kind of wondering, maybe I want a crystal on this one, too. I think I do. I think I want a crystal on the one that doesn't have one, this one. So let me, let me take that apart. Because if that's the first thing that shows through, I don't mind seeing a little bit of the... Um, you won't see the gold then if they're, the gold will be up in the, in the bead cap. I hope. That's the plan. All right. This is why I didn't crimp down yet. Let's get a crystal. I really made my wire wonky. My beading wire. And then we'll put that back on. We'll look at it one more time. All right, so that's on that side. So we want this on this side. And down through that crimp. Maybe. But not through the crystal. <laughs> at least not yet. Oops, where'd you go? Don't go, don't go, don't go trying to escape on me. <laughs> do you talk to inanimate objects like crimpies? I do. Yes, hi, my name is Deb. Maybe I'm a little goofy, huh? <laughs> there we go. Sort of, kind of. Get a hold of that. Maybe. That crimp bead is just tough. Where's my pliers? Because I want that to come up snug on this side in particular. The next side is going to be a little little harder even. 
crimp bead is really being tough. There we go. Okay, now let's try it in the bead cap again. Bead cone. Yeah, I think that I, I think I like that. You like that? I like that. Okay, I am going to crimp this and then I'm going to do the other side off camera and I'll come back. Okay, but let's do this one. We're just going to come in here and crimp down using the regular crimping pliers. Do the pull test, make sure that's not sliding around, that your wire's you know, tight. And turn it around so the tail's going backwards. And it won't, if there's any little tail above that crystal, it's not going to scratch anybody because it's going to be up in that bead cone, which is perfect. All right, I am going to cut that tail off because it's going to confuse me when I'm doing the other one. I'm going to put that back here with my sort of trash stuff. I usually have a, one of these front bins in my bead tray as a trash thing. And let's do the other one. And usually I try and make sure it's not crisscross, but I think it's okay. You really just, to get a good divot is what you really want. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not. Yep. Yeah, there. Um, that's what's most important, preferably with one of the wires on either side of the gully. That's the whole idea. Oops. Go in that one and just go around a little bit and then we're going to cut that off okay now let's put that through our um, cone and figure out what we're going to do on the other side I could I think I will do I have two that'll sort of match? I'm going to put a round, I think, on the top of that cone. Does that look all right? I do see a little bit of the crimp tubes there, but eh, it's okay. Because my loop probably could have been a little bit smaller to go up a little higher into the cone. I'm not going to fuss about that. I am going to do that. I'm going to put this bead on and I'm going to do a wire wrapped loop. So I, on my pliers, I've mentioned this before, if I go right at the tip and bend over it, that little space usually is enough for three wire wraps. Now if you use a much thicker wire than 20 gauge, it might end up being a little different. And I usually like to go about here on these pliers, but every round nose pliers is a little bit different. So you have to get to know your tools and how things work with your tools. And also, when you buy your tools, buy them that fit your hand. You see how short these are um, compared to some, like even these are a little long for me. They're all right though, because they're skinnier. But there are some really professional pliers. They must be made for men or people with large hands because I can't use them. I've tried them at bead shows and stuff, and I recommend that. Go, even if you don't buy them at a bead show, go try stuff out if they have things sitting out at bead shows. Um, actually, I'm going to hide, hold this with these, and I'm going to wrap it with these because I can get a tighter wrap I feel like with this. I have a little bit too much wire cut off but it's okay and I want to get it snug. I want that bead to be down snug on that bead cone. Oop. 
<laughs> maybe if I can get it past my fat finger. I'm just bringing it around. I'm not doing a sloppy wrap, or I'm trying not to. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I actually got four wraps on there to make it snug, which is more than I usually do, but it's okay. I don't want it to be loose, and that's it. Let's make sure. Yep, that's all nice and snug. All right. And I'll get my skinny nose, chain nose, which are by Zoran, which is where my cutters are from that I've used for so many years and I love them, but um, I'm due for, I have another pair that's an orange one that cuts a little bit heavier wire and I think I need to start using them. I keep saying that, but I love these and so I haven't I haven't given in to switching yet. The only thing with these now, just in the last six months or so, this one side, the rubber keeps sliding down and I just take them like, like this, hold them about here so I don't cut myself and push down. I don't want to do it on my beadboard to get them slid down. But uh, it does say use safety glasses. <laughs> How about that? I'll save that for something. So isn't that pretty? I think I will let you go for a little while so I don't jabber to your ear too much. And I'm going to make sure I have a crystal on the end of this one too before I um, proceed. Or otherwise I'll forget and then it'll be wrong. And you won't be here to talk me out, out of doing it wrong. So I'll be back when I finish this and do the same thing here. And then we'll just do these links. Okay. See you soon. Okay, everyone, I am back. Um, I had four six millimeter rounds up here, but I removed one and I ended up tossing one back here because it also was chipped at the, at the bead hole part. But also, when I put this clasp on, it is, um, I think it's close to like three quarter inch. It's a little over half. See, it's and it, it's going to be longer than that. If I go this way, it's about, yeah, it's about three quarter inch. So that's going to add some length. And also, if I wire wrap these, it would add length. So I think what I'm going to do is just do simple loops on the bottom of each of these and attach them with jump rings. Now, unfortunately, in antique brass, these five millimeter supposedly yeah five millimeter vintage brass are the smallest vintage brass I think I have and we're still going to have some length but I think it'll be okay and that way I'll have the clasp attached with the jump ring I think we're going to be at uh, like 19 inch necklace I'm okay with that I hope you are too. Isn't this pretty? I really, really, really love it. Love the fall colors and stuff. So I'll do one or two beads with you and then I'll go off and finish it and bring it back and lay it out on without all this stuff in your way. So I am going to make a loop. Um, actually, when, if you're doing a simple loop, make sure you cut this wire off flush. It wasn't flush. I probably cut it against the using usable wire flush. And I'm going to go, now if you want your things to be consistent, you can mark your pliers, but I, I have a pretty good sense now of um, where I need them to be. So I'm just wrapping it around. And then I did what they call, a bad term I know, break the neck. You just kind of go backwards over it. And um, then I do take my flat nose, usually chain nose, and just make it like flat because I don't want it, you know. And I don't need a whole big piece because this is just one little bead here. So I'm going to cut... I need enough to cut off for the thing. I'm going to cut it about here. 
So that's what about an inch after the loop it's about an inch and a quarter maybe um, so let's just do one or two of them the loop I probably could have used a smaller loop there now to make a simple loop all you do is if I can get a hold of it hang on bend it over the bead right at the top right at the top this is actually too long and how I do it is I measure I squish my finger up against there and sometimes I don't get it right but I'm gonna say about about that much so I even had too much but I needed it because I need to be able to hold on to the wire and about the same place on my plier I'm gonna come back around and do a loop now it's a little it's it's good but it's a little um not on the same plane i do want them to be um facing the same direction so these are flat going this way not one going up and down or one going sideways i just want to bring my um round nose in and just oops push that a little tighter and i'm going to do that on the same on the other one I think actually what I'm going to do is that looks a little smaller than this one. I'm actually going to come in with my cutters and just nip a tiny little bit off here and then bring my round nose in and bring it down because I don't want space between that's the one thing I don't like about the one step looper is I find it leaves a lot of space between the bead and the loop and I don't like that because then your bead can move all around see this is nice and snug now I mean I've used the one step looper and but I, I take it and finagle it afterwards so it takes just as much time to me to do that so I'll do one more and then um, I'm going to let you go and I'll attach the jump rings. I mean, I might go look for some smaller jump rings. All right. I'm going to cut that flush again because apparently I did it the opposite way again to cut off the last piece, which is okay. Just cut a little bit. If you have precious metal wire, just take the bare minimum that you can at that spot on my pliers. You decide how big you want the ring. You're the boss you're the boss but I like about that that size and we're looking for a lollipop here I learned that years ago from Wyatt White um, Beetle on had a I don't know if they it's still called that up near about 20 minutes away from me they have a factory um, wire and something it's called um, Anyway, they used to have, but they don't anymore. Um, all right, let me cut about this, oops, this much off again. Um, anyway, he was doing demonstrations and showed how to do that. And I was like, yay, that's pretty cool. A lollipop. And so ever since then, I do my loops that way. Now, do I have the wires opening on the same side? No, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. It's more important that they're they're flat, you know, against the um, bead and on the same plane. All right, let me do the cut it off. Of, oops, sorry. Ugh, Apple News. I have an Apple iPhone. Yes, I do. Good and bad. <laughs> uh, it's bad because I don't have an Apple PC and um, they don't like each other. I had an issue yesterday. Oh my gosh. Okay, I have that a little too big again. I'm going to cut that off just a little bit up here. And I will have to flatten it because I got it all wonky wonky. There. All right, now bring these in. Make sure it's nice and flat. Boy, that looks that looks pretty wonky, huh? It's 
still a little bit big, but it's not bad. And it's closed. Actually, let me see if I can get it to go down to the other way to the bead there. There we go. A tiny bit bigger than the other one. Not much. Okay. Nope, it's loose. I don't want it loose. I, yes, I am a little bit of a perfectionist. Do you see? There's. I don't know if you can see. There's a little room between where the loop ends and the bead, and that gives the bead wiggle room. I had the other side perfect, but this side is not. So I'm going to do another little snippy. Not much. It doesn't need much. Just a tiny little bit. And bring my round nose in again. About that same spot. And bring it down. All the way to the bead. And then do the old flattened thing. And actually try and close it a little better. Okay. That one's pretty good now. All right. And I think that's it. I'm going to do the three that were over here. <laughs> I lost my beads. Uh-oh. I did lose a bead. Oh, fine. Oh, here. It's in here. Nope, that's not it. That's a... Um... Anyway, I will find it. My runaway bead. It might have gone into the bad bead section. Nope, that's not it either. I think this is it. No. Anyway, I will find it and I'll get those done and then I'll come back and show it to you. Hi everybody, it's Deb. Here's the finished necklace. Um, a couple things. I had these jump rings out earlier and they were supposed to be five millimeter. I mean, they're all, but I think they're six millimeter because, and I think they're about a 20 gauge and I thought they'd look too big. Um, and took up too much room in the back. So I found these from Beta Holic Antique Brass Open Jump Rings. And it says they're 5 millimeter, but they're 18 gauge. And do you see the difference in size? These have to be 6 and thinner also. So I thought these would be better because A, they take up less room back here. And B, 18 gauge is a lot sturdier. I think I have to close a few a little better. I might also put one more on this uh, on here to make this have a little more movement to go into the toggle because I kind of feel like um, this bead is a little too close to the toggle. I don't know. I'm not 100% sure I want to do that. I guess maybe not. But I think overall it came out really nice. I love this necklace. Let me know what you think. Um, and let's see, I think it's 18 inches when I when I shortened, took one bead off here, and then I used a smaller ring here. Um, well, the inner one is probably <laughs> 14. See, this is what happens to me. I can, the nice thing is, if I have two beads that aren't damaged, wounded beads, um, I can add another bead back here. Because I think I want it just a tad longer than this. So... If I say from the clasp, we'll say the middle of the clasp to, yeah, that's about eight, no, not quite eight and a half. So that's only like 16 inches and the inner one is smaller. So I think I am going to go ahead and add back in another a fourth bead up here, um, do another chain link and that should add another, well, let's see how long a chain link here is with a, um, with a, it's halfway through the jump ring. I only add another half inch, so a half inch on each side. That might be enough though for where I want it to be, but I, and I think I'm going to do that and then I will call it done, but I think it's beautiful. And, uh, let me know your thoughts and that will be it for today. Um, so, yeah, the finished necklace will just be half inch longer on each side. And then I don't think I will add another length on here because I think it'll throw off the balance of the necklace. But I love it. I hope you do too. All right. Have a wonderful day. Bye for now.